CCF family. I'm Cindy Soriano, and we're here with Pastor Joby to do Sunday Fast Track. Cindy, I'm so excited to do this with you. Okay, me also. All right. So I must say the message just so clearly reminded me that to love apart from the love of God, the forgiveness of God, mm -hmm. it's impossible. Yes. And so I'm so glad that we have the Holy Spirit as, you know, as a helper to help us do it. Yeah. All right. So, Job, I have one question first. The first question deals with a relationship. Mm -hmm. So let's say I know somebody quite well. All right. And from this person's lifestyle, it's very obvious that she or he is living in sin. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to tell him the truth. Okay. My, my first question is, should I tell him the truth and risk lo losing the relationship? Or if I do tell him the truth, how do I do it? Okay. Wow. First of all, it's a great challenge because you can come across as being intolerant, judgmental, mm -hmm. and that's what you don't want to do. My answer, let me just say, will not fit every situation. Mm -hmm. You need to discern how this answer will apply to you and how you can use it in your particular circumstance. Before you tell the person the truth, they must know without a doubt that you love them, you care for them. That way, you will not come across as being condemning. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15, speak the truth in love. So depending on how the Holy Spirit leads you or guides you, you may want to ask them questions, questions that will somehow reveal to them uh, their own lifestyle and that they will express it through their answers. This is much better than outrightly telling them the truth about their sins, okay? Most people today could be living in denial. They're probably choosing to suppress the truth, to justify their ways, making up their own values and, you know, but deep in their hearts, I know that they know what's right and wrong. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is the one who convicts us. So we can share with them how we went through a journey of sin to salvation, how God embraced us with his love, even before we chose to surrender to him. Jesus himself spoke the truth in love. He spoke to the Samaritan woman, the rich young ruler, the Pharisees and the scribes in different, different ways. So it would be best if you and I make sure that our heart is right with God. And at the same time, you and I are led by his, his divine guidance. Let him guide us before we share the truth of God's word to the people we love. So I guess it involves a lot of prayer. Mm hmm right timing, yes. the Holy Spirit's prodding, mm -hmm. and then a, a godly motive, mm -hmm. and most especially a good relationship with that yes. person. Yes, That's a good reminder. So I'm now thinking of a lot of people who, who have been, how, how do you call this, betrayed, yes. lied mm -hmm. to, um, and a lot of people talk to us about this. You, mm -hmm. you remember? Yeah. They, they tell us that it's very hard to forgive or love somebody because the person doesn't even want to acknowledge the fact that they have caused pain and hurt. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm thinking of uh, men and women who have been what sexually abused, mm -hmm. cheated on, swindled, and then like nothing happened. How yeah. do you love and forgive like Jesus? Wow. Those people... Evil people, if I, you know, the, their intentions and their actions were sinful, and they may never ask for your forgiveness. Exactly. They might not even admit that they're wrong or even be convicted of their sin. But let me ask you a question. Does that mean that you and I live the rest of our life with hate, anger, bitterness inside of us? And the answer is surely not, right? But here's another question. Can you and I forgive a person without them asking us for forgiveness? And the answer is yes, definitely. It would be ideal for them to beg for forgiveness, for them to have tears of sorrow. That's not always. It doesn't happen. Yes. That's what, what really counts is that we go to them. What really counts is that we give them forgiveness, whether or not they ask us for forgiveness or not. But we forgive them in our hearts. Without even having to see them physically, we can forgive them in our, in our hearts. And that's what counts. That's what counts. Now, forgiveness does not mean that you instantly trust them, that you become best friends, that you restore your relationship to what, what it was before. Mm -hmm. That's not the point. Trust takes time. Trust needs to be established. 
it may never be established, but the key is that we must truly extend gracious, sacrificial love to them in our own way. And I always go back to Jesus when he was on the cross and he prayed to his father against all the people who were torturing him and crucifying him. And that moment he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Now, Jobs, you're, what you're saying is that forgiveness is not only for the other person's sake. It is most especially for our own our sake. sake. Yes. Because carrying it around for the rest of our life is truly uh, futile. Yeah. And you yourself will be in that pit yes. of unforgiveness. Yes. And such a sad place to yes. be. Such a sad place. Praise God for that answer. Now, what about, um, you know, the third question has a lot to do with people who don't really love the Lord. Mm -hmm. And they have openly rejected, even mentioned hate words mm -hmm. against Christ, uh, mocked him, mm -hmm. ridiculed him, and even in social media, make fun of him. Yes. What are we as Christians who love God, you know, above all else, mm -hmm. how are we to treat them? How are we to love these okay. people? Because right now it's happening. Yeah. So you're pretty much asking, should we abandon these people who've abandoned and rejected God? And let me ask a question to that question. Mm -hmm. Has God abandoned them? Or in, you and me, yeah, right? In spite of them, them abandoning him. And the answer is no, God has not. If you and I choose not to love them, how will they ever experience the love of God? So how do we love them? Well, first of all, I look at my life and I say, I don't deserve the love of God. Not at all. And yet the reason I am where I am today is because of people who reached out you. and truly showed their, their love, God's love to me, in spite of my sinfulness. Remember John 13, 35 says, by this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Mm -hmm. May we not be obstacles for people to experience the love of God. There should be no excuse in the world for us to have as a, a license or permission to withhold our love from others. If ever, and this could happen, if ever you and I get stuck in our emotions and feelings of wanting to hold our love back to others, mm -hmm. I really suggest that the first thing we do is we, we stop and pray and ask Jesus, Jesus, please fill my life, fill my heart with your love. And strengthen me, pour out in me your love, so I may be able to do that to others as well. Yeah. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, it does. In fact, I, as you were answering my mm -hmm. question, the Lord reminded me, Cindy, you didn't love me in the beginning. You hated me mm -hmm. by your lifestyle. And I'm so convicted. And so I think we should remind ourselves that we were there once. Yes. And that if not for the love of God, we would not be where we are. Yes. Thank you so much for all those answers. I hope it helped all of you. And, and that's all we have today for Sunday Fast Track. See you all. Goodbye. God bless you. Love you.